for so many years pretending like I was fine and pretending like I got this, I am a tough bitch, cause I am, but I also just was neglecting how uh, much help I actually needed. Hey besties, welcome to I Missed Me. My name is Mafia Suarez. I am your host and I am so happy and so grateful that you're here. Today I have Lissa Gilmore with me. Lissa is a content creator with over 35,000 followers and she is the host of the Unwinding podcast where she talks about topics around self-growth, heartbreak and healing. So Lissa, welcome to I Missed Me. So excited to have you here. Hi. Um, so happy to be here. <laughs> I am super excited because we're going to talk about heartbreak and relationships and everything that love it. our listeners love. So my first question to you before getting onto today's topic is like, what made you start your podcast? Because every time that I interview any other podcast host, I like to start with like your journey. Honestly, it came from not being able to shut the fuck up <laughs> and <laughs> wanting so bad to be mysterious, but I can't. And I think when I first discovered podcasts, I was like, this is what I want to do mm -hmm. because I always knew I wanted to share in some way online, but I always felt so, and still do feel like resistant to taking photos or videos. Like that part is, I love it. I love consuming it. I love watching it, but it feels, I feel very resistant towards it in a way. I do wow. enjoy, I enjoy it and mm -hmm. I do it, but it's like, it's hard for me. I feel like I have to push myself wow. to do that. Do you, do you have a reason for that? I don't know. I think, I mean, probably if we like went deep, I probably mm -hmm. just nitpick too much yeah. or I never feel like something is good enough probably mm -hmm. and I but I also feel weird sharing in that way I don't know it makes me feel like vulnerable but for some reason I can get on a microphone and talk about like my deepest traumas and yeah. that doesn't feel weird mm -hmm. I don't know why mm -hmm. but I love the medium of it and I think when I discovered it I was like I love it because ultimately it's like telling stories mm -hmm. you know and it's what I enjoy the most honestly it's like the conversation about in social media is what I enjoy the most. Mm, I love that. Getting into today's topics and everything yes. that you talk about on your podcast, what are like your biggest like red flags when it comes to starting like dating? I love red flags and icks. I feel like we <laughs> love to talk about that and I love it so much. But I think for me, it's so situational. Like obviously I could tell you a, a, a my biggest red flag is I think how they treat people yeah. around them. Like how somebody, anybody mm -hmm. could be a friend, it could be a man. It doesn't matter how you treat the people around you. I'm super aware of that. And I'm very cautious of that. That's like my biggest one. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, like, of course the big ones, like, I don't know, just being shady or yeah, yeah, things yeah. like that. Um, but it's interesting because I was thinking about this and there's some red flags that if I told you about like a guy that I dated You know, like for, I'll give you an example. This guy that I dated who was fucking the monster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, We've had those. <laughs> he, his, he always took his phone everywhere, always had it face down and didn't have social media. Those weren't red flags to me <laughs> in the moment. Like they weren't because I respect that. I don't think everybody needs to be on social media. I have a lot of friends that don't enjoy it. You, I take my phone everywhere, like <laughs> everywhere. Um, so to me, that wasn't alarming. Right. But then obviously months later when I discovered everything that was, was going on. Was I was like, cheating? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, it all adds up. Right. So in that regard, it was a, a red flag, but yeah. do you know what I mean? So it's so situational. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't you don't totally see it depends. in the moment, but then you start yeah. like realizing. Obviously like the, I think it's all about how you feel, how mm -hmm. somebody makes you feel. And yeah. yeah. Where are you currently in a relationship? No. What are like your non-negotiables that you're like, this person has to has, have this, this and that. Cause like when you're like independent and like have yeah. your shit together, you like, you look for someone that has their shit together yeah. and like you have your non-negotiables and expectations like super set. So what are like those that you can think of, of like, if this person doesn't have this, I'm not settling. That's such a good question. I think, I think because I've been single for a long time, I have a lot of expectations, which I think is okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think a few things that I won't budge on are just, I think it goes back to like the values because mm -hmm. I feel like you can't teach someone that, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? There's a lot of things that I think you can help someone through and, and quote unquote fix. Yeah. But I think if the values are not aligned, if we are not aligned on the way we treat people, the way we treat ourselves, the things that we want, wanting a family, um, valuing like our relationships, being ambitious, mm. wanting to learn. 
I, I'm a very curious person. I love being around people who always want to grow in some way. I think there's also like a limit with that, you know, like yeah. too, I'm such a fucking Capricorn, like too much self-optimization is also yeah. not a way to live, I mm-hmm. think. But yeah, I think those are probably the biggest ones that if those aren't there, I don't think we would be a match. Yeah. You know, and like you, you said it. Um, I don't think that having a lot of expectations is a bad thing because you also know that you have a lot to offer. Totally. And that's a big thing for like our listeners is like sometimes you think that you're too picky, but like also come back to yourself and be like, yeah, but I also have a lot to offer. And in that same topic of of relationships, we were talking about friendships, mm-hmm. which is also like a very important like part of our lives. What are those like quality traits or like things that you need in a friendship for it to work and for it to be healthy? I love talking about friendships so much. It's such a big part of my life because I... I don't have a big family. Mm -hmm. I have a very, very, very small family. And thank God I like have found family in so many friendships. Friendships. And I think when I think about the friends that I love the most Mm -hmm. and the friendships that are the strongest in my life that I always go back to that are like anchors for me, when I think about like what about them makes them so special, I, it always goes back to the same thing. Obviously it's a million things, but like high level, it goes back to truly how I'm able to show up because one of the things that a big word for me, something that I look for in people is feeling safe. Like that's a huge thing for me because when I feel safe, I am my best fucking self and I want to give you my best self, you know, and the people that make me feel safe are people who obviously they're kind, they're loving they give me a safe space. They're non-judgmental, but they're also people who hold me accountable. Mm-hmm. Like they help me grow. They're going to call me out on my shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're also people who, and this is like the biggest thing for me truly, is people who are able to celebrate me and celebrate my wins, celebrate my moments and not feel like me having a win or me having a moment is taking away from theirs. Right. And genuinely. That's like... I swear that's one of the biggest, I like can't shut up about Mm -hmm. that because I will, like, I've been able, I've, I've been able, I've not been able to continue being friends with somebody or have them close in my life because I'm like, I shared something with you and I felt like you were so not happy for me. And that to me, it's not even about being happy for somebody. It's more, it it shows me so much about a person, right? you know? So I think those are the when I think about the friendships in my life that I like value the most, mm-hmm. they have a, lo- a little bit and a lot of all of that. Yeah. How can someone, cause sometimes we stay in friendships because of our fear of like being alone or I'm not going to have any friends anymore. And like being, we've always been told by like even TV when we were younger that like being without friends is like you're the loner and you're the weirdo. Like yeah. how can someone lose that fear of like, it's okay to maybe not have friends and to like, it's better to not have friends than to be with the, with the people that are not good for you. Well, I think, first of all, I think it's so valid to feel fearful of not having friends, but I think what's worse than having friends that you're not happy about? Mm -hmm. Like, I would rather be alone than be with people that I don't feel great around, Mm -hmm. like whether it's friendships or dating. And I think, I think also a big thing with that is we're so scared to be uncomfortable. I think that's what it goes down to, right? Like people stay in friendships or in relationships because they're scared to be alone or because they feel like they've invested a certain amount of time and because they've invested that time, it would be a waste to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And I just think like, ultimately, sometimes we have to be uncomfortable. Yeah. And realizing that being uncomfortable is not dangerous. Mm -hmm. Like personally, like if I'd rather just be alone than be with a friend who makes me feel like shit. And also, I don't know, I feel like truly, this is so cliche, but like we only get one. Like, we only get one of these lives, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Why do you want to be with people who don't, like, make you feel great or that you don't love? Like, I don't understand. Like, truly, I I don't know what's wrong with me, but I say this to my friends too. I'm like, why are you with this fucking loser? Mm -hmm. He sucks. Like, what are you doing? And I've been there. Okay, we've all been been there. Maybe it's being 30, but (laughs) even with friends. Like, and I think also a big thing there is it's – it really isn't about how many you have. I think that's also a fear. People are like scared to let a few friends go because they're like, oh, then I'm only going to have one or I'm like only going to have Like the more friends to, that I have, the, you know? the more popular, the better. Yeah, it's like, it doesn't better. mean anything. It really yeah. doesn't mean anything. It really doesn't. And sometimes all it takes is having one. one. 
Like, and I think people undervalue that. It's like, that is one person that you get to call a friend. Like it's a gift at the, at the end of the day. Why, like, why do you need five? Mm -hmm. You know, like it's, I think to answer your question in short, learning to be okay with being alone. If that means you're not entertaining people who don't deserve you. Mm -hmm. I think life, like you said, always puts us in an uncomfortable position on yeah. purpose so that we can like learn how to be comfortable in uncomfortability. And if you haven't gone through it, you are going to go through it because I feel like we all needed to grow. What was that point for you? And like, how did you get out of it? Or how did you like, again, work on being comfortable with feeling uncomfortable? Like, what was the moment that I felt really uncomfortable? Yeah. What was the moment where you like, oh my God, I've had so many. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like. Like a life changing one. I've, I think I, and I appreciate this, but I think I've been through a lot of hard shit. I've, I, we all have, yeah. right? But I feel like I have had really big, like... Rock bottom. Yeah. I think losing my dad was a huge one. Mm -hmm. And then my sister, like, is mentally ill. So that's also something that I don't wish upon anyone. Because I feel like at least my dad... Not at least. Oh, my God. That sounds horrible. <laughs> but it's... I know what you mean. Losing somebody... At least in my case, you know, he got sick. We had a year of trying to do everything possible and then he passed away. So there's a beginning, a middle and an end. Yeah. And it do, it's heartbreaking. I would do anything to yeah. have him back. But it provides closure in a right. way. Whereas with my sister, it's an ongoing everyday situation yeah. that literally it just is what it is. Yeah. That's all. That's it. Hmm. So that's uncomfortable on a daily basis. Um, and what was your question? When when. Yeah, like how do you get like used navigating to, that? Yeah, navigating uncomfortability. I think sorry. So what I was saying was, those two things happened kind of back to back, and now, like I said, it's more ongoing. And so I've had moments where I'm like, I am so uncomfortable, mm -hmm. and I need to learn how to navigate all these things that are happening in my life better. For me, therapy was life changing. Mm -hmm because it taught me how to actually be uncomfortable mm -hmm. and understand that again, being uncomfortable is, it's not dangerous. It's just, I have to learn how to better handle my anxiety, better hand handle my feelings, have an outlet, you know, understand what I need when I'm having these low days. So I think, yeah, I would probably say, I think when I was like 26, 27, all of these things kind of caught up to me because I was for so many years, pretending like I was fine and mm -hmm. pretending like I got this, I am a tough bitch because I am, but I also just was neglecting how uh, much help I actually needed. Yeah. And that kind of resulted in me fixating on food and exercise. Mm -hmm. And then I developed just a horrible relationship with food and exercise. And ultimately, that's why I went to therapy. It wasn't even because of the other things that were yeah. happening. It was because of that. And then you realized that you had. Right. But once once I got into therapy, my therapist was like, okay, listen, mm -hmm. this is not about the food. This is not about your body. Like, there's so much here that we have to, like, uncover. And there's a reason why the food and the body thing happened. It's, and I was controlling that because I felt like I couldn't control anything else that was happening. So that, I think, was my, like, one of my biggest wow, so rock bottom mm -hmm. moments. And... It was years of therapy, which is so fucking hard. Like people think you like walk in, have this session, and then you walk out and you're like, okay, fixed. Yeah, it's you know? not to, it, you realize so much stuff that you also have to deal with by yourself. Because like therapy is only like an hour session, but then you have to carry whatever you learn, like the, the whole day. It's hard. Right, like being in the session is nice and fun yeah. and, 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 and difficult and you vent and you cry and you laugh and, you know, you grow. But then you actually have to do the, everything. The work after And that. the exposure that happens when you, like, leave your therapist's office, like, that was so hard. So I think since then, the last few years have been really about just, like, taking care of myself, mm -hmm. you know, and learning how to – I'm a very anxious person, always have been – learning how to – navigate that learning how to deal with the things that happen in my life that I can't control learning how to be uncomfortable you know learning how to not take out my issues on fixating on different things whether it's working out my body food all those things you know so really that's been like the last few years have mm -hmm. been let's figure all this shit out and mm -hmm. you know try to get to a better place yeah changing the topic a little bit and going back to something that you 
also talk a lot about on your podcast, which is situationships. And I know a lot of people that listen to it and listen to me are going through it. So mm-hmm. how to escape it? Because I know that you have an episode where you talk about it and how to avoid it next time. Okay. So I will just say, I love a situationship sometimes. <laughs> honestly, I sometimes I purposely... Spice, spice up your life. Sometimes I purposely allow them to happen. Right. Okay. But I think we're asking, and I say this again, as somebody who has been there, I think we're asking the wrong question because I have this conversation a lot with my friends and it's like, why do I always end up in this situation? Why do I always end up in situationships? And it's like, I love you, but you don't end up in them. You are letting them happen. Yeah. Like we really are. We're letting them happen because we're allowing different behaviors to happen. And sometimes again, that's fine. It just depends on what you want. But I think it's honestly very simple. I think the way that we end up in a situation is, and notice I said simple, not easy because mm-hmm. it's uncomfortable. Again, yeah, yeah, yeah. it really is because it yeah. requires like a conversation. That's I a, think that's a huge thing. I think the reason why we end up in these situationships is because we either didn't vocalize what we wanted or we vocalized what we wanted, but we didn't hear what we, what we wanted to hear or the other person is not aligned on what we want but yet we want to stay with them anyway because of a variety of reasons. Maybe we like them. Maybe we're thinking like, oh, maybe he'll change his mind. Um, I say he because I date men, (laughs) you know, but whatever, whoever you're dating. Um, And so I think ultimately the way that we end up in them is by just not being afraid or by being afraid of either vocalizing again what we want, maybe not hearing the answer that we want to hear, and st- like sticking around mm-hmm. anyway, yeah. you know, you live by yourself and you spend a lot of time alone. And like you said, like working on yourself and like genuinely getting to like know yourself. Yeah. How have you learned to enjoy loneliness? Because I feel like that's a big topic and a big fear of people that listen to our podcast is like, I, I don't like to be alone. And sometimes like out of distraction, we'll play a podcast to like be distracted or do something, be with our friends. But like genuinely, like you have to learn how to be by yourself in order to like experience better relationships better friendships like everything so how have you personally navigated your journey with loneliness and how have you you know worked on it I think I have had to be alone a lot Mm -hmm. so I've had to learn how to enjoy it and I think now I can say like I love being alone I need alone time I love people but I People drain the shit out of me. I can't be around people all day. So it's not even something that I enjoy, but it's something that I need to feel good. But of course, like I'm not a robot. Of course, there are moments when maybe it's because I'm single. Maybe all my friends are busy. Maybe, you know, my my family lives in a different country. Like whatever the reason is, sometimes I do feel lonely. I'm not a robot. Like, of course, I'm going to have those feelings. I feel like those moments are few and far between because I have worked so much on the relationship with myself yeah. that I act, I like love my own company. Like yeah. I drive myself insane yeah, some yeah, days, yeah. but for the most part, I love my own company. Yeah. And that has taken work. Like that has taken so much time. So much work. But I also think, you know, I have friends that they don't like to be alone. Like right. they don't like to be lonely. And I think that's okay. Like, I think it's fine. However, I think just having the understanding that like you will feel lonely at some point in your life, whether you have a whether you're in a relationship, whether you have a million friends, sometimes you're going to feel lonely in a relationship, you know, like, so I think coming to terms with the fact that loneliness is a natural part of life in some moments and understanding again, that it's not per- personally, it's not particularly dangerous. It's just maybe sometimes something that I don't want to feel, mm-hmm. you know? So I think what I would say to somebody who is scared to feel lonely for whatever reason is instead of looking at it as something negative because if you think about it truly like loneliness is not I know it has so many negative words like attributed to it but it's not like inherently a good thing or bad thing it depends on it depends on who you're talking to I love being alone so for me it's a great thing you know but I think with that said look at it as instead of something negative like oh my god I'm gonna be alone this weekend or I'm gonna I'm gonna feel lonely what if Mm. I feel lonely what if we looked at it as an opportunity Like, what if we looked at it as, okay, I have this time and how can I fill it up? Yeah. You know, and truly just think about what, what have you been wanting to do that you've never done? Why are you, why are you scared to be alone? Mm -hmm. Is there something that 
can we read something new? Can we watch something new? Can we take up some a new activity? Yeah. Um, can we be curious like with this time? And I think, you know, I think it goes hand in hand with like filling up your life as much as possible with things that you love yeah. so that you don't experience, you know, a lot yeah. of loneliness, but also understanding that you, you might feel those feelings of loneliness anyway and learning how to be okay with them. Yeah. And that's going to look so different for everybody. Like, yeah. so, and also just realizing like, you're going to feel lonely sometimes and it's going to be shitty and nothing is going to make it feel better. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Like, you're going to be fine. Like tomorrow's going to be a new day and you were just uncomfortable and that's it. Yeah. You know, everything is, is temporary. I yeah. Think that's super helpful. Right. Like there's no permanence in right. the feeling, hopefully. Right. You know, and you're not going to be alone forever. Right. right. Sometimes you need to just like, sometimes I just have to talk to myself and be like, you're going to be fine, bitch. Mm -hmm. Like you've been through worse being feeling lonely a few hours on a random Saturday night when maybe I just, you know, sometimes it happens. Like all my friends are traveling. Maybe I'm single. Maybe, you know, like maybe I have no plans. Mm -hmm. And maybe that day I actually do want to have a plan because sometimes yeah. I purposely want to hibernate, but maybe it happens that I actually did want to do something, but I have no one to do something with. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, okay, well, you know what? Tonight's maybe going to suck a little bit, but like tomorrow's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. So what can I, what can I give myself tonight that is going to make me feel better? Yeah. You know, and just having the self-awareness of like, what do I need right now? That's what can I give important. myself? I think self-awareness is a very like key word when it comes to loneliness. It's like, okay, like, it's not that bad, but what can we do to like feel better? Yeah. And also if you know yourself and you know what you need to not feel lonely, mm -hmm. sometimes that looks like planning ahead. Right. You know, and like filling up your week. Like if you if you're in a season right now where you're maybe feeling a little more resistant to feeling lonely, maybe you are feeling more sensitive to feeling lonely because sometimes I feel like we go through waves, happens, right? Yeah. Then act accordingly. And like fill up your week, you know, like make plans, figure out like, okay, how can I fill up my time? Yeah. I think it's also sometimes like um, planning ahead, mm -hmm. you know, for those yeah. moments. That's super helpful. Lisa, thank you so much for this conversation. I want to ask you one more question to close it off. And it's a question that I ask everybody that comes when I miss me. And that is, what does healing mean to you? I know I thought about this question and it's, I could talk about this for hours. I feel like healing for me has been the messiest hardest but also most beautiful part of my mm -hmm. life but I also think it's my favorite part about he my healing journey I wish we had a different word for journey but my favorite part about it is that I feel like it's never gonna end yeah you know and I'm always gonna be healing something new mm -hmm. and I think for me the biggest thing so far that I can talk about my healing process has been it's taken me from somebody who was truly so mean to myself. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I like to think I'm a very nice person to everybody around me, but I was so mean to myself. Mm -hmm. So it took me from that to uh, being in a space of actually telling myself that I like deserve all of the beautiful things that I want yeah. and believing it. Yeah. And that's what, that's where we're at now. So that's beautiful. Again, thank you so much. Where can people find you? Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> um, I am on Unwinding Podcast. I am on, that is my podcast. Sorry, <laughs> can I speak English? You can find me on Instagram and on TikTok. I'm more fun on TikTok than I am on Instagram. <laughs> um, and my podcast is called Unwinding. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to follow I Missed Me on social media at I Missed Me Podcast. Don't forget that I have a clothing brand, no name project.co. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Mafia and I will see you guys next week. With love, Mafia.